Uh, hello everyone, and welcome to a video where we're going to be looking at Flex. Uh, I created a little track here, you'll hear it at the end of the video, and uh, yeah. So this is kind of like a synth wavy ish track. I uh, got some chords, bass, brass, lead, and then an and then an arp. So I guess I should like uh, preface this here. The only thing in these plugins, the only thing that isn't like uh, flex, is the drums and the sub. Everything else is flex. Now, granted, there isn't a lot here, but it already fills out like the spectrum pretty well. So, and it's gonna underrun a bunch because unless I checked, uh, do these even have like smart disable and enabled? They do, but I guess I should talk about like pros and cons of this plugin. So, I'm assuming this is the preset only version that they've given out for demo use for now. Uh, not sure when the like actual like when we can make start making sounds from scratch will come out, but I do know that the preset only version is available for fruity edition users and up. So like this plugin is pretty available unless you pirated FL. Uh, so let's talk about its pros and cons. One, I'll I'll start with the negatives first. One con I did notice: this plugin uses a lot of CPU, like. More than Spire, which uses is notable for using a lot of CPU. Uh, I, I, I would kind of hope that this plugin would be a bit better because, you know, I, I'm aware my laptop sucks. But if this is marketed to new producers, I would think not most new producers are going to like not have the greatest laptops or greatest machines unless they're like immediately starting out and getting their bases covered, which is smart. Uh, but if this is, but most new producers aren't going to have a really good computer to start out with. Uh, I still don't have a new computer. Uh, uh, well, uh, good computer to really do this on. So I, I, I notice things like this, that this plugin uses so much CPU. So you're just going to have to keep consolidating your tracks. And if you're like me, I like to tweak stuff at the end. Uh, not like there isn't much to tweak with this plugin, but uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, I, I prefer having like as much MIDI clips as possible until like the project becomes unworkable and I have to render stuff. Uh, but this plugin, I think if it's going to be marketed to newer producers, it shouldn't use this much CPU because this is like barely anything and my CPU is like dying, which normally in a project, even though I, I do have a master on this, this would normally be in a project, the underruns that I'm getting that's complete. This should not be happening. It, I could understand if it was like a full length project, but this is a 16 bar demo. It, it, I, I, I get that it's still in beta, so hopefully they improve these CPU issues because, God, this is, it's not great. Uh, something else uh, that I did notice is the piano sounds suck. They suck, except for two. And those, t actually, except for three. Those three are uh, the electric piano. Nice sound there. Gonna get a little bit of clipping there, or like saturation from uh, my master. Uh, the roads are good. 
And then this piano is actually pretty good. A little tinny, but it's better quality than the rest of these pianos. Uh, for example, this one, this one right here just sucks. It's not really that good. Um, which, I mean, Image Line hasn't been really notable for having great piano sounds. I do think this is bet. It's like slightly better than FL Keys. I'll give them that. But it's not that much better, and you could literally get a be two better pianos uh, for free labs and addictive keys. <laughs> and well, addictive keys is like a demo, but it, it gives you a lot of options. So uh, I, I think ImageLine kind of needs to step up their piano game. Uh, the strings, they're all right. Uh, like if we go like cellos. They're kind of fakey, but these at least sound pretty good and they'll get the job done for newer producers because if this plugin is going to be marketed to new producers, it needs to be as like simple, easy to understand as possible. And I think ImageLine has done a great job with that. Unlike uh, something like Harmer or Citrus, you know, I remember when I was first learning FL and I just look at this and I just go, what? <laughs> it's... I think this is broken down much better. It's very clear what it's doing. You've got your packs, your presets. You've got an analyzer with four options, which I think is great. You got macros, pitch, filter, envelopes, master filter, a delay, a reverb, your limiter, and your output. It's very simple. And I think if for new producers, this is going to be very easy to understand as long as you under like fil understand filter basics. Uh, one another gripe I have is like some of these some of these preset like macro names. I'm not I'm not certain how I think about them. They're kind of like buzzwordy. Uh, I get again, I get it. it's marketed for new producers, but I think we really shouldn't be using buzzwords. It's a gate. Just call it a gate. This is tremolo, and this is your tremolo speed. Dark, and I think it's literally just a filter. Call it a filter. Like, just kind of annoys me. I, I wish that they would, you know, use regular terms here and not these weird, weird terms that even I, I kind of get what they're trying to get. Like, I already kind of knew darken was going to be like a low pass filter. I'm really sure what that one's doing there. This one's like a really weak high pass filter. Don't get how that changes the tone, but okay. Uh, so I think some naming could be done better. Uh, I like the, I like that there's options to change the filter envelope. Uh, I believe for the bass sound that I use, uh, I believe I use I changed the filter envelope settings a little bit. Yeah, I just put the cutoff a little bit more. I think I was fiddling around with it earlier, and it it can lead to some pretty cool stuff. Uh, so uh, let's keep going. Uh, I think besides the pianos, the rest of these packs are pretty solid. Uh, the 808 basses, they're all right. They do their job okay, but I think they can be better. But I think for a new producer who like wants to make hip-hop beats or whatever for the rest of their life, uh, this is a great starting point for you. Nice samples. Uh, I think the yeah, rest of these samples are solid. Uh, <clears throat> Something that I really noticed that I really liked was these filter options. Like, wow, I was shocked by this, especially for the f pretty much free preset version. Uh, I was shocked by how many filter options there were. And I'm pretty happy with this. Like, this gives producers another option to change the sound more. Uh, got some delay options, uh, some limiter options. And then you got reverb. So 
Uh, another complaint of mine, I get that it's like, I get that this is supposed to be like the preset only version and it's just like sounds ready to go immediately. But it would be nice if we could change these macros. Like, how hard is that to ask? We can change the filter. What? I, I wish we could change these macros because there, there are some that really don't make sense. Why do I need a phaser on strings? I mean, sounds kind of cool. If you're doing like 80s stuff. But if you're trying to like emulate a real orchestra, a phaser is not really going to help you out here. Uh, then let's talk. Uh, let's talk. It's reverb, actually. So let me just get like pluck. Then let's let's focus specifically on this reverb. This reverb's okay. Okay. Um, I just think it could have. You know, some more tweaking abilities. I like that you can modulate the reverb. Uh, you can pretty much automate everything in this plugin, so if you want to do some changes, you can. But for some sounds, this reverb just kind of sucks. I don't know. I think this reverb maybe could be better. It's an in-plugin reverb, so not really expecting much, especially for a plugin like that's so simple like this. So I can't complain too much. Uh, so let's get into like things that I like. First thing I like, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, these different analyzers, I think it's a great way to look at your sound. So you have your spectrum, uh, uh, yeah, your spectrum, your vector scope to like check stereo, I guess, and then another visualizer. Uh, macros, uh, sometimes they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit vague with what they mean, but they give you more options to change up the sound. See, this is what I don't get here. <laughs> Let me be negative again for a second. This one's called a high pass filter. Why wasn't the other one called a high pass filter or a low pass filter? Image line, make up your mind. It's it's a little annoying. Bite. Saturation? I'm not I'm not quite certain what that one does. Yeah. That's just a peak in the high end. In a very irritable zone. Why? Stereo. Space, which I think is just, it's just reverb. Although, a much better reverb than this. They're kind of similar, but I think this reverb is handled better. Like the delay of it is much better. I like that it's delayed a little bit before it actually reverbs. Uh, then uh, something I also mentioned, the filter types, like if I wanted to get weird with this sound. Do some comb filtering. I need something that like holds. So let's do, just get a lead sound. So maybe let's do like a comb filter. Can you change it a little bit? Uh, let's do like comb minus. Oof. So yeah, you could do some interesting stuff with the sound. Maybe like a uh, vowel. Sudden guitar. So, yeah, very, very cool options here that I like. Uh, uh, so this one's kind of a pro and a con. I think the simplicity of this plugin serves it well and serves it poorly in some ways. Uh, I think on some 
of these macro names, the simplicity for newer producers could be a bit more specific. Because if I was a new producer, I'd be like, oh, what does this mean? And I would just be confused. I think they should try and be a bit more specific and leave out vague details. Uh, but I think that overall, this plugin is super easy to understand. And I would have loved something like this if I were to like, when I was a newer producer. Uh, because I know new producers are just going to love this plugin. Uh, I'm curious to see uh, when the... Uh, if the uh, editing, when you can actually like start making your own sounds with this, I'll probably do another video on Flex. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think this is a fairly solid plugin. Could use a little, it could, for a little bit of summary, uh, it could be a little less vague. It could do with some less CPU usage. And uh, I think it could do with maybe a better reverb. Uh, but this is a, and some better pianos. Image line, please. Better pianos. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, follow my socials, and I have a Discord server in the link below if you want to join it. Uh, it's not just for production people. Uh, it's for, like, artists, like, visual artists, video creators, uh, animators. I think that's... Oh, and, like, writers, if you, like, write stories. Because I wanted to create a server that, like, kind of, like, joins everyone together. So, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you later.